My name is Debbie and this is Pouring My Art Out for the Lord. And I was watching Treasure Books um, with Natasha and she, um, she always comes up with fabulous ideas. And this one was making um, just uh, um, different things. She had pouches and envelopes and different things. But uh, one of the things that she made was she took a picture from a Reader's Digest book and another page from the back. This one I didn't do a very good job on. Another page from the back, <clears throat> or for the back, I mean. So there's two pages here, one, one page um, with the picture and then one page just with text on it. And she put them back to back and she put contact paper on them and sewed around three edges <clears throat> and made these little pouches. And so these were my prototypes. I thought that was really fun to make. They have, um, makes them into really sturdy pouches um, because of the, the plastic and, and the stitching really keeps them on well. I'm not sure if this would work with glue very well. Um, but anyways, um, if you wanted to try something like that and you could um, do it without the, the lamination if you wanted to, but I think that really makes it into a neat project. Um, so I designed a digital here and this is going to be on my coffee shop for free for my inspired junk journalers. And this is basically the front and the back. I made it um, basically the same size, maybe just slightly bigger. Um, so this is the front, this is the back. And then to hold it closed, I decided to make a hidden paper clip. So I made this hidden paper clip to coordinate with that. And then I just wanted to fill up the page, so I, I put a file folder, and this is our um, Inspired Junk Journalers um, uh, motif for, uh, uh, it's our identification that I put everywhere. So. so I thought I'd put that there, and I put it separately so you can add it to the back, um, add it to something else in your journal, or, um, if you just wanted to have this for more than one use, you wouldn't have to put this on there. And I mean, you could use this digital for different things as well. It would be make, make a cute little booklet cover as well. So if you didn't want an ephemera holder, then you could do that. So I'm just gonna get this cut out and then I'm gonna show you how I put this together. All right, so I got my pieces all cut out here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of scoring. Um, first, I'm just going to score this booklet in half. And the easiest way I like to do this is just to put it on my scoreboard against the top and the left edge and fold this over and just line everything up against the left and the top edge and just fold this down. And then it's a perfect half every time. If, if uh, I mean, you could do that without the scoreboard. It just makes it a little bit easier to have that edge. Or you could put that line, there is a little bit of a line there um, in white that you can put that right on your score if you want to do it that way. So there's that. And then this is the, the hidden paper clip. So you want to score on all of these black lines here. So I'm going to just line them up on my six here because that's just the middle of my board. It makes it easy. So I'm just going to score on all of those black lines here. And I did, I printed this all out on um, a little bit heavier copy paper. So it's about 28 or 32 pound. I can never remember which one I use because I have both, but um, <clears throat> so it's a little bit heavier than lightweight copy paper, but it's not as thick as cardstock. So this paper clip has quite a few layers, so it didn't really need um, that bulk. And this is going to be laminated as well, so I didn't really need that to be that thick. So for this one, just uh, fold on all of those scores. And I'm already getting crooked here, so just kind of take your time to get those nice and straight. Thank you. 
All right. And this paperclip idea I initially saw on Sparkbird and um, she she made them using a, a digital and then she made them without using anything, any digital, just pattern paper or whatever. And she made them in different sizes and and uh, it's, it's a really neat tutorial if you want to um, check that out. I'll, I'll uh, link that below as well as Natasha's um, video to do this. So <clears throat> what I need to do is um, the below here there's two white panels below the, the focal point and if you pinch that so that these three um, printed paid uh, pay, the three printed panels are face up and then this is underneath then you go back here and you put your paper clip and this is a two inch paper clip and um, there's there will be a side that's shorter so you can see the I don't know if you can see the score line there but this one is shorter so you put the shorter end of the paper clip here and this is the longer side so you put the longer side of the paper clip there and then this just gets folded like this and that kind of overlaps just to keep that paper clip secure and then this wraps around to the back I have uh, another video where I showed this in a little bit more detail so I'll link that below as well so you can check that out if you're having um, troubles getting that folded properly and then I just want to to uh, glue all of those edges so I'm just going to glue this edge here so the first thing you would glue is <clears throat> this this um, bottom flap over top of the large part of the paper clip so I'll just glue that on like that and just press your sides and give it a minute for the glue to take effect. This one I press quite hard on the paper clip. You're going to see the impression, but um, there's another layer going over that in a minute, so that doesn't really matter. And then I glue this short flap on to the short part of the paper clip. So this just reinforces and keeps that paper clip in place. So again, just give it a moment to get that to set nicely. And then what you want to do is you want to fold this pattern part back up over this. So here's your short flap and here's your short part of the paper clip and you just want to fold that back on there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there. a lot of glue in this this project so it should hold it fairly securely and now because this is the one that's going to be showing I don't work so much on the inside of the paper clip pressing it there because this is just uh, copy paper so I'm just giving it a press on the outsides like that so you don't even see the impression of the paper clip anymore and then the last one is this this final flap and this will be our back. So again, if, if you wanted to see that in a little bit more detail, I'll link Sparkbird below and I'll also link where I did um, a video on how to do it. So just take a minute to press that on. And then I would do a bit of inking around the edges of this. Just using Distress Vintage Photo for this. Could have inked this edge before you put the paper clip on, which I probably should have done. I think I did that in my first video, but so then you have a neat little hidden paper clip, and it's it's really sturdy and it's um, completely hidden. So, so this will be the closure of our. Um, ephemera pouch. So there's that. Now here's our label for the inspired junk journalers. So you can put that, I think I'm going to put mine right there. Um, you can leave it off altogether. You can put it, probably wouldn't fit very well in the front anywhere, but 
I guess you could put it at the bottom, hide the flowers. I'm going to put it up at the top here. And if you wanted <clears throat> to make this ephemera pouch with without the label, or if you wanted to make it twice, you could make it once with the label and print just this page out again. And you could do it again with the uh, without a label. So once with a label, once without a label. And then you could use it for, you know, whatever project that you wanted to. Okay, so then I've got that. Now I'm going to need some contact paper. And I'm just going to run and grab that. So this is what I'm using. I think you can get this pretty much at any dollar store. I've had this for a long time. This is the contact brand. Um, a lot of times they call it contact paper. But there's, there's other brands that you can get as well. And when you're sewing it on the edges and stuff anyways, I don't think it really matters if it's... It might be a little bit maybe harder to adhere if it wasn't as thick, but um, this is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. So it's it's a little bit thicker, maybe plastic, I'm not sure, maybe they're all like this. So I just put my, my piece on, I laid on the contact paper and cut around it. I just like to add a little bit of a border so that I can uh, have that to work with. And then I want to put the contact paper on the front. So Natasha shows an easy way to do that by peeling back a little bit of this corner like this. And then I've done this a few times and I can't remember if, if all of this is exactly how she did it or if I kind of made you know adjustments to how I did it but so I just fold the back a little bit and I, I trim off that edge and then I turn it around it's probably easier for me to do it this way and then I this will hang off a little bit so just get that lined up on just the edge here and it's again easier if you give yourself a little bit of margin here and then just make sure it's nice and flat you don't have any bubbles or anything and then just to make it easier for my position here so I'm going to this will stick onto your table so that'll hold it flat and then just reach in here and grab the the end of that paper and with your hand go back and forth here and just really slowly pull this backing paper off Instead of trying to do this in one motion, this makes it a lot easier for you not to get bubbles and uh, wrinkles and stuff. So, and this is how Natasha showed how to do it as well. Just take your time back and forth. I'm just pulling probably half an inch at a time and going back and forth. And you can get a nice, perfect appearance, just like that. So that part is garbage. And this is our pouch starting. So I'll just peel that off of there. <clears throat> now, first of all, I just want to stitch the top edge. I didn't do that on these ones, but... Um, I think I wish I would have um, stitched here. So I'm going to stitch this one. So, just thinking, I don't, this is gonna stick to my sewing machine if I do it this way. I could just fold, I think I can just fold this back. I'm gonna try that. I didn't do that on the other ones, but I'm just gonna try to fold this back. that and then if I put it this way in my sewing machine it's not going to stick on anything and then I can just stitch this top edge so I'm going to be right back okay so I ended up just putting it in um, with this side face up so my stitches were maybe 
Now oh, they're pretty even on both sides, but I wanted the, the top side to be the better side. Um, I kind of went a little bit crooked there, but that's my fault. So <clears throat> then you want to fold it in half again. And this is where it comes in handy that you already scored it there because it'll easily fold in that position. And then you can just fold it like this. And then you can trim this completely off or you can just trim it um, kind of close to the edge and then it'll keep your your folder. You don't want any sticky sides maybe on here. So just trim off anything that's sticky. But if you sew it um, this way, then the, the two pieces will stay together. If you cut it right to the edge, then they won't have anything to stick to and it will be, uh, this is, you know, it's slippery, so it may be a little bit slippery to uh, to sew. So I just stuck those two edges together, so this is basically a pouch already. All of this is, the bottom is stuck and this is stuck. And I guess if you didn't want to sew, you could probably just leave it like that. You know, maybe trim it a little bit closer. I'm not sure how um, durable this adhesive is on the contact paper if it would stay but you could definitely experiment oh mine is already coming out but mine is old so but you could also put a little bit of glue um, on the contact paper or just inside even and do that but I'm going to sew so I'm going to sew uh, I'll probably I don't know I'll, I'll decide when I get there but I'll probably sew all the way around even though I don't have to sew on this edge because it's a fold just to make the pattern uniform. So I'll be right back when that's done. Stitched on all three of those sides. I uh, did a back stitch here and I forgot to do a back stitch here. I should have done a back stitch there. So I'm going to have to put a drop of glue there. I don't usually back stitch on paper, but because this has the plastic, I think it's fine to do that as well. Um, so then I would just trim off the excess contact paper right close to the edge there. We don't need that anymore. And like I said, I'll do just a little bit of, which was my edge here, this edge. I'll just put a little bit of tacky glue on the stitches here, just so those stitches don't come undone because this is not going to be glued on anything. My bobbin also ran out of thread, so that's why you got a little nest down here but I'm probably gluing a little bit overkill but so then you've got your pouch and it's quite a sturdy little pouch um, this one is white inside you could have printed on the inside on the other side of the paper as well and then you can stick in your little pieces of ephemera and I've got lots of little pieces with my uh, my inspired junk journal kit. Here's kind of all my extra pieces of different things. This is actually another one that I made with some of my small pieces, basically the same way, but I used a, a hymn book page, front and back, and then I folded it over and made a little envelope. And then I had a, a Velcro closure on that one. Um, so this is some of our fussy cuts. So if I just stick those in there, the pouch and then I use my paper clip to put that on top and then nothing is going anywhere and then we can take it in and just stick it into our signature somewhere just you know we can just tuck it in while we're working um, we can tuck it into a pocket or something but it keeps everything nice and and uh, secure and it looks pretty so and then, you know, at the end, if you don't need it anymore as an ephemera holder, um, you can just tuck it in for a pocket and it matches the, the kit as well. So, so that's what I got for you today. So <clears throat> you can make it out of anything, any kind of scrapbook paper, digitals, whatever. Um, this paper clip, you can, if you don't have... Um, this printable you can go over to Sparkbird and she shows you the measurements how to do that 
um, on any paper. And actually on my video I show how to do it on any paper as well. And uh, I'll link Natasha's video for this. And if you're an inspired junk journaler, then head over to my coffee shop and you can pick up these two pages of digitals for free and make yourself some pouches. Thanks friends. See you in the next video.